So in this video, we're back to the multi-board, but this time I designed and 3D printed these really cool down lights. Now they're using a custom PCB for those RGB LEDs, and it's powered by the ESP32 with WLED. So in this video, we'll go over the process of how you can make these yourself. Of course, all the files are provided for free in the description, and there's links to Maker World, etc. So without further delay, I think the first thing we're going to do is jump on Fusion 360 and actually have a look at the design in CAD. So first of all, this is the ESP32 holder. And if you have a look at the back, we can see that multi-point connection. And then we have these two holes for the wires to go through. Now, if we turn it around, we can see we do have a lid and that's just sort of friction fit and that'll keep it nice and secure. So next, just for fun, we'll have a look at the render and it looks really cool in this red anodized. I wish you could print it like this. Anyway, that is the ESP32 holder. Next, we're gonna have a look at the actual downlight itself. Now it is in lots of different parts. So this is the multi-board sort of snap section. Then we have the extension bar the main light itself, sort of the down light, which has the LEDs in it. And then we have the end caps. Now, if we zoom in this section here, these sort of cutouts, that's for the PCB board with LEDs. And these two cutouts at the bottom, that's so we can slide in that diffusion layer. So again, let's have a quick look in render mode just for fun. But as we do, I feel like I have to mention because a lot of people are going to be asking, why is it in so many parts? Why just not print it in one part, maybe actually three parts and then the two end caps? Well, the reason being is whenever I printed it, it never came out right. So it was best to super glue the end cap, the pole and the down light. Now, when printing it, this part here gets printed like that. The pole sort of extension section that goes upright and of course so does this so this area right here actually goes on the build plate and that was the best way to actually print it to get the best results so now we know what it's going to look like we need to get everything printed and while everything's printing on the printer here's a quick message from today's sponsor JLC PCB because these videos wouldn't be possible without them now, JLC PCB pride themselves on having a fast, reliable service at really competitive prices. And in their state-of-the-art facility, they can even get orders out the door within 24 hours. So let's have a quick look at the ordering process. This PCB is a basic RGB one, so we'll grab the Gerber files, drag and drop them onto JLC PCB, and then we can go ahead and customize the order. How many layers, the size, the quantity, and of course you can go for five for as little as two dollars. 1.6 millimeters because that's what's required and you can obviously choose the color loads of other options but as you can see two dollars and twenty cents so why not check out the links in the description for more information and latest offers and see how much you can save when bringing your ideas to life so thanks again to JLC PCB for sponsoring this video. Right now the printers are finished. Let's have a look at all the parts we're going to need to make these down lights. So first of all, we have the RGB LED board and then we have the three parts that make up the majority of the down light. We have the snaps, the diffusion layer and then the little screws that hold the snaps on. We have some wire that I've pre-cut and then we have the end caps. Now, one of the things that we haven't looked at before is putting those surface mount LEDs on the PCB itself using a stencil, solder paste and a hot airflow workstation. So let's have a quick look at how that process works. But if you do want to see a dedicated video, let me know in the comments below. Now, of course, this PCB is from JLC and you can get it with the LEDs already on. But we've got 10 LEDs here, a blank PCB and a stencil. So we've got everything we need to basically get this job done, add them ourselves. And it was actually quite fun. So we've cut the stencil down because they come absolutely massive. So I've cut it down. We'll line it up. Basically, there's those pads underneath. So we've got it all lined up. We're going to be using just some cheap solder paste 
and then we're going to smear it across and this is just a scraper from a bamboo lab printer scrape it across so it goes through all the holes and then when we take it off there's just a tiny little amount on each of those pads you can't really see it here but trust me it's there so the next step is to get this clamp so we're going to clamp it onto here basically it just helps to hold it because we're going to be heating it from underneath now you don't have to do this but i put some flux right down the middle there should be enough flux within the solder paste but i decided to do it anyway then we're going to place the leds the notch in the corner matches the diagram on the pcb and we're just going to chuck all these on here they don't have to be perfectly lined up at this stage we're just going to chuck them all on there ready to then start heating from underneath so we've got a hot airflow gun here and it was only a cheap amazon one set it to 400 degrees and we're just going to heat it up from the bottom now a little trick that i found is if you move the led and then it stays where you move it to it's not ready yet if you keep heating it up and then you'll see in a moment I know I've zoomed in and it's really blurry, I'm sorry about this, but I just want to show you, see how I'm moving it, and then it wants to go back to its original position. That means all the solder's melted because it's being attracted to those pads. So go ahead and do all 10 of them, just line them up, and then as soon as it melts, all that solder paste will melt to normal solder, and then they'll just stick in place. So I just put an ESP32 with WLED on here just to test just to make sure they all work basically and yes they're all working perfect one led pcb done let's start by making our first downlight and of course we're going to have 10 to make but i'm not going to make you watch all 10 so let's get the first one out of the way now i know there's a lot of stuff here and a lot going on but we'll go through everything each step so we've got some gorilla super glue here and basically we're going to put the main body of the downlight together so we've got the end piece that has the leds in we're going to glue that to the main center section and then we have the part that has the snaps that goes into the multi-board itself we're going to glue that as well so that is the main body all done next we're going to take those two wires that are pre-cut and strip those quite long bits off now I'm going to be using JST connectors. Now we're using three core wire. So we're going to use the one with three on them. So these pins actually go into one side of the connection and then we're going to have to solder the other side, but I'll show you that in a moment. So essentially we're going to put the wire through into where this little pin connector is. And then we squish it down and it'll basically keep it nice and secure on the end of that wire. Now we need to do all three of those and then we can put it inside the connector. So you just see me here getting two of the connectors out because one goes on one wire and one goes on the other. So we've got these pins here and then they have a little tab sticking out. So as you put them in the connection, it will go so far down and then the little pins will come out and that is it basically secure. You can take them off again if you poke something through onto the pin to release it. But as you see here, it's nice and secure. They're all in. So of course, that is going to be the input wire because obviously we have data input and output. This one is going to be for the data output. So we're going to have to solder the wires onto this one because these are really designed to go on a PCB. Now, I could have made custom PCBs, but, you know, I'm making it more complicated than it has to be anyway. Once we've got the wires soldered on, we can then use some heat shrink just to tidy it up a bit. To be honest, I wish I had some white heat sink, but you make do with what you've got. So next we need to feed the wires down through the downlight so we can then solder them to the PCB. So how I done this was I slid the PCB down and then just left enough sticking out so I could solder the wires. Now remember the this one is the input so this is going to be data in. So we've got positive, negative or ground and then the data in. So then next up, we want to take care of the output. So we're going to do the same thing as before. We're going to slide that PCB all the way through and then connect the wires. So this is going to be 
the five volts, the ground and the data out. And this will basically go to the next down light in the daisy chain. Next, we're going to make sure that PCB is dead in the center and get the super glue back out. Because what we're going to do is we're going to super glue one of the end caps first. Doesn't matter which one, just make sure you only do one. Now, once that dries, we can then slide down that diffusion layer and then we can glue the other one on the other side. Now, just before I put this together off camera, I did actually test it. So make sure you do that as well. Next, we're going to put the snaps on. Of course, there's two little sort of plastic screws as well. But for all intents and purposes, that is the first down light done with its input and output wires. So now it's all built and tested, it looks fantastic. So it's time to do another nine, but we'll do all this off camera. So we've basically got all them done. Let's have a look at how I fit them. And I'm only gonna fit one just to show you guys how it actually goes on the multi-board itself. Now, I will apologize now, it's not the best camera angle, but we can see we've already got the other nine lights on here. So this is number 10. So what I want to do is feed those wires through to the back space of the multiboard and there's eight millimeters of gap between the actual multiboard and the wall itself. Now I'm just going to remove our handheld so it's easier to get to, but we're going to take the output of that light to the right and the one we just put in there, we're going to get the input. So it's just an easy case of connecting them up, even though it's fiddly. But once you've got them connected, it'll look like this. And then all we need to do is test it to make sure it works. And there we go. It lights up. Amazing. So that's it. We're all done. We've just got the final down light fitted to the multi-board and now we can test it out to see how cool it actually looks. But as we're looking at some B-roll footage here, I do need to let you guys know that one of the things that I found really frustrating in Fiddly was connecting those input and output to the down lights to each other behind the multi-board itself because you've only got a gap of about eight millimeters. So it was really tight and fiddly, but we got through it in the end. And as you can see, the multi-board looks absolutely fantastic. The camera doesn't do it justice. It looks so much better in person. Now, of course, if you want to do one of these yourself or several, all the links are in the description below and everything is free. And of course, if you do need any help, you can always drop a comment below. And if you want to see other projects like this, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe and then hit that bell so you don't miss any of those future videos. If you do need to set up your WLED ESP32, click up here. There's a dedicated video for that. And I'm actually going to be doing another video soon going over segments and how to sync them. Because as you've seen, we have 10 and each one has 10 LEDs. And it's all powered by one ESP32. So in another video coming up, we're just going to go over how we can segment them off so basically you can control them as 10 individual lights so you can have different colors for each one and of course you could have different effects as well so it's about time i ended this video but if you've made it this far thank you so much i really appreciate it i'm jp and as always i'll catch you in the next one